If people have hurt you, the number one thing that God requires is that you forgive them. And the really painful part, bless them. So we're talking about pressing into new beginnings and that in order to do that, you have to always be willing to let go of what lies behind. How many of you have had something in your life that you put a lot of yourself into and it just didn't work out? Okay. Well, you got to be very careful that you don't just get stuck at the things that didn't work and let them get you to thinking that you're just a failure and that it's all over. Because I'll tell you something, God is never without a plan. No, you may not know what the plan is, but God knows what the plan is. Now, in the book of Samuel, there's Samuel 1 and 2, we read about King Saul. Now, first of all, God never wanted the people to have a king. He wanted to be their king. But he, the people insisted on having a king. So he anointed a man named Saul to become king. And the Bible says that when the spirit came on Saul, he was turned into another man. And that's what happens, man. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, whatever you were before, you can kiss goodbye because he's going to turn you into a brand new, sharp, threshing instrument. Do you realize, do you realize that we have world changers sitting in this room today? I'm telling you, when God gets hold of you, man, it's all over but the shouting for the devil, because if you really stick with God and do what he leads you to do, I mean, you just have no idea what you can accomplish and what you can do. I mean, I'm from a place called Fenton, Missouri. Now, I've got a lot of degrees, honorary degrees and, you know, things that I've been given and I, I appreciate all of them, but I have a 12th grade education and so let's just say for all intent and purposes, I'm not especially brainy smarts, but I love God and I've got a lot of common sense. And so I'm not educated to do what I'm doing. I never went to Bible college. I don't feel like I have got to have some kind of a fancy title in front of my name. I started out Joyce. I'm still Joyce. I was a mess, and God got hold of me. And he changed my life through his word, and he called me to share his word with people. And today, the message that you're hearing here this weekend will be heard around the world in over 100 different languages. And I almost failed English. I didn't care if it was a noun or a pronoun or a verb or what it was. I just wanted to talk. And so now people think I speak all these languages and I'm still working on English. I'm trying to get a point across that really, to be honest, it's God that makes you special. And you don't have to have a bunch of special stuff going for you for God to use you. All you have to be is available. Here I am, God, use me, send me. But you can't be stuck somewhere mourning over every mistake that you've made. You can't have a victim mentality. My, my parents didn't treat me right. I didn't get the right education. I didn't get a chance to go to college. I didn't this, I didn't that, I didn't something else. It doesn't matter what you don't have if you do have Jesus in your life. You understand that? If you have Jesus, if you have a great personal relationship with Jesus, you have got all that you need. 
to do something great. I said great, something great with your life. So, God anointed Saul to become king. And Saul, Saul was partially obedient, but he wasn't completely obedient. He did most of what God told him to, but a little bit of what he wanted to. <laughs> and he did this over and over until God finally said, you're not going to be king. He lost his opportunity because of disobedience. Well, the prophet Samuel had put a great deal of time into Saul, and he loved him, and I'm sure he had prayed for him and worked with him. And so when Saul lost the opportunity to be king, Samuel was grieving, very grieving. You know, when we have loss in our life, we grieve over those losses, and it's right to do so. But you have to be very careful that you don't let a spirit of grief get on your life and keep it the rest of your life. Because if you do, it will keep you from letting go of what lies behind and pressing on to the things that are ahead. I remember a story a woman told me, a friend of mine, her teenage son got cancer and they did everything. Everybody prayed and they did all the treatments and he still passed away. And so naturally she was grieving and hurting and she said one day she was in her basement doing her laundry and she said I could just, I could feel like the spirit of grief just trying to wrap itself around me. And she said I grabbed a piece of clothes and threw it around me and said this is my garment of praise and I'm not gonna live in grief. And she just started dancing around her basement with that piece of clothes wrapped around her. You know, you got to let the devil know that no matter what he's been able to do to you in the past, and no matter what he's taken or stolen, that you are going to put your faith in God, and God is going to give it back to you, not one time, but double what the enemy took. And when you've had some mourning and some grief in your life, oh, it's so sweet when the joy comes. You know that we couldn't even know joy if we didn't know sadness. One time I went with my daughter to, the, to a spa to get a facial and somehow or another I got home and didn't have my wedding ring. And uh, called the spa, they didn't have it, nobody had seen it, and so I just figured that I must have left it on the counter on the sink and, and uh, somebody took it. And so, I mean, I, it really hurt me that I had lost it. You know, it meant a lot to me, and, and so there was a, a grieving period of time. And then I finally just said, well, Lord, it's just a thing, and I can live without the thing. And uh, so I went on about my business, and uh, two or three months went by. My daughter called me one day, the one that had been with me at the spa, and she said, guess what I found? And I said, what? She said, I found your ring. It was in my purse. <laughs> and... I'm thinking, why would it be in your purse? Well, then we realized the purse she had belonged to me at one time, and I had given it to her. So when I took my ring off, I just looked at the purse, thinking it was mine, put it in her purse. She went home, took the stuff out of it, and never used it again for months. And then when she got out, well, I was so overjoyed that I found my ring. Well, here's the thing. I would have never had the experience of that joy had I not had the loss. And I want to tell you something. I want you to get this and believe it today. Some of you have had some terrible loss in your life. You've endured tragedies, injustice. Things have happened to you that are not right, that are not fair. And it's been hard. But oh... Oh, come on now, you know where I'm going. Oh, I'll tell you what, if you won't have a bitter attitude and you won't take on a victim mentality and you'll go ahead and love God and be obedient to him and continue to try to help people, 
Oh, your reward is going to come, and you are going to be so overjoyed. So don't look at what you've lost. Look at what can happen in your future. You know, Martha said to Jesus, her brother Lazarus had died, and she said, Jesus, Lazarus has died. If you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. And Jesus said, he will rise again. Martha was looking at what had happened. Jesus was looking at what could happen. Come on, which do you want to do today? Keep staring at everything that has happened, or do you want to get excited about what God can do in your life? But, <laughs> you got to hear all of it or it won't work. You cannot have a bad attitude and also have the great life that God wants to give you. Now, either people have hurt you or maybe you've done some things that have made you sad. And if people have hurt you, the number one thing that God requires is that you forgive them. And the really painful part, bless them. Oh. Oh. My goodness. Let's read it. Luke 6, beginning in verse 27. But as I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. <laughs> now, I'm not making this up. This is... It's like you've got to be kidding, God. <laughs> Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, don't withhold your tunic. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and as you wish that others would do to you, you do also unto them. My goodness, what if the whole world lived by that? Treat other people the way you would like to be treated. Now, I'm going to take the time to read this because we just need to hear it. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that? For even sinners can love those who love them. <laughs> and if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive something back, what, what credit is that? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return. <laughs> Come on, you, you know what we do when, when somebody that we've been good to mistreats us? After all I've done for you. But if I'm reading that right, it says, no, 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 no. You don't do stuff for people expecting them to do something back for you. You do it unto God, and you expect your reward to come from God. You may not get rewarded from the person that you were good to. They may be the very people that take advantage of you and hurt you. But if you keep, if... <laughs> If you keep a good attitude and just do what God's asking you to do, there is no devil in hell that can keep you from being blessed. Amen? Do you all agree with me way up there? How about all the way up in the back, way up there? You agree with me? Make some noise. But Joyce, that's so hard. You know what? That's an excuse we have to stop using. You know why? Because we're anointed for hard. We don't need the Holy Ghost to do easy stuff. 
But there is nothing that we can't do that God wants us to do. If we will learn how to depend on God and not depend on ourselves and our own strength to pull it off. I'm saying there is nothing that you can't do. God will never allow more to come on you than what you can bear. You may think right now you're in over your head and you just, I just can't do this. I can't, I can't make it. I'm not going to make it. Well, yes, you will. Because there's been all kinds of things that I thought I'd never get through and I'm still here. And how many of you can say the same thing? You've gone through things that were so hard. You didn't think you'd make it, but you're still here. And your reward will be great. <laughs> oh, <whew. laughs> All these things I've read, he says, and if you do them, your reward. Come on, some of you right now, you're in the, you're in the sowing stage of your life. Some of you are in harvest, but you didn't come to harvest without digging up the fallow ground and planting the seed and waiting and going through hard times. Maybe you had a few crops that failed, but you just kept planting and you kept planting and you kept planting. And now you're in a season of reward. And those of you that are sowing and life is hard right now, just keep doing what's right. Saul would have remained king if he would have just kept doing what God asked him to do. But no, he had to have a little bit of his own will in there. Well, I almost did everything you told me to. Your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High. Why should we do all this? For he is kind to the ungrateful <laughs> And the evil, so be merciful even as your father is merciful. I'm going to tell this story just as quick as I can possibly tell it, but I don't see how I cannot tell it, although you've probably heard it. My father sexually abused me. My mother knew it, but didn't. She was too afraid of my dad to deal with it. Reached out to other relatives. Nobody wanted to get involved. You know, back when this was happening to me, nobody heard of such a thing. A girl's own father doing that to her. I mean, you, just, you never heard it. You, never, you just didn't hear it. And that was one of the reasons why my mother never took any action to do anything about it. She said, I just couldn't face the scandal. Well, I'll be honest with you. In many ways, it was harder for me to get over my mother not protecting me than it was what my father did to me. And I still don't, can't wrap my head around that one, how you how you can do that, but God gave me the grace to be able to forgive both of them. And one of the things that helped me so much was when he told me hurting people hurt people. So, you know, my dad wasn't raised right either, and there was incest way back in his family, and on and on and on. And you know, once I got away from them, I preferred to just stay as far away as I could and see them only when I absolutely had to. Now, I officially forgave them. <laughs> you understand, I, as a Christian, I forgave them. <laughs> you know, we pray our official, I forgive you prayer. <laughs> but I didn't want anything to do with them. I didn't want to be around them. And so as they started getting older and older and needed more and more help, one morning I was praying, <laughs> asking, God, what's your will for my life? <laughs> you better be careful when you pray that. <laughs> and God started putting it on my heart that he wanted me to move my parents from where they lived in southeast Missouri to St. Louis where I live buy them a house because they didn't have any money and take care of them until they died. Oh. I rebuke you, Satan, in Jesus' name.
Yeah, and some of you are trying to rebuke the devil, and it's not the devil. <laughs> Just because it's hard, that doesn't mean it's the devil. Anyway, long, long, long story short. I tell it often, but it's, it's just such a great example. I don't know how, but God gave me the grace to do what he asked me to do. And the thing is, I can tell you, I think as far as power against the devil and power with God, I think that's probably the greatest thing that God has ever given me the ability to do. When you can find the grace of God to love somebody who's done that to you and to spend your money on them and to take care of them and to do it for a long period of time. Now that takes a lot of God. But if you do what God tells you to do, your reward will be exceedingly great. Come on, I'm trying to push a few people over the edge today. Come on, let's stop with the part-time obedience. How many of you think there's power in the name of Jesus? Well, guess what? I didn't get Dave's name while we were dating. It wasn't until I said the I do, till death do us part, and then I got his name. You know, a lot of good stuff happened. I didn't have any money when I married Dave, and he had a little money. And once I said, I do, I had money. <laughs> I didn't have a car. Dave had a car. As soon as I said, I do, I had a car. <laughs> but I didn't get that while we were dating. Come on. If you're just dating Jesus... No, no, you got a sign on the dotted line. I do. And I don't even know what I'm saying yes to, but God, the answer is yes. Why? Because I trust you enough to know that whatever you want me to do, whether I like it or not, no matter how hard it is, it will be the best thing for me.